All right, thanks, Natasha. Uh, here I am with Bob. Hard to believe. Isn't it hard to believe? Yeah. It's, it's like uh, it's been a little over a week since you and I, and I to truth be it. told, we met at the airport in Philadelphia, right. and, and the, as the plans were coming together, we weren't even sure where we were going, exactly. who was going with what crew where. Mm -hmm. You go one place, I go to Atlantic City. Right. You start. What, what, I mean, how, how have you processed all this? I, it's hard to do it. And I remember seeing you in Philadelphia and say, Mike, it's not just a hurricane. All right? It's a hurricane coming up, but it's going to merge with another system coming in from the west. It's going to make it stronger and broader as it comes ashore. And I gave you a little hint to say, you know, don't go too close to the water because it's going to be tough. So you split off. You went to Atlantic City. And I went to Asbury Park, which was north of that region. And uh, we both got hit hard. I think you got hit first yes. by a couple hours. Tell me how it yeah. was. When I it mean, it in. was... You know, you've always heard, and this is my first right. on-site hurricane right. storm surge. Mm -hmm. So I'm standing, uh, and when we first got there, it was in the morning, Monday morning, day right. of. Right. And it, the, the water was high, and then it receded. Mm -hmm. So then toward the evening, you know, I'm standing in it with East Live Shot over and over again. The water would come up to the knee, <laughs> mid-thigh, yeah. if I continued. I mean, if I pushed closer toward the ocean, it was in my waist. And, and then dangerous. the 90-mile-an-hour winds, mm -hmm. pretty humbling. You feel pretty yeah. small, at least I did. I yeah, mean, short really enough good. to begin with. But then now I'm practically drowning in this stuff. Yeah, it was tough, too. And not only that, but it, it hit on a full moon, which makes the tides even higher. And then it hit at high tide for both my area and your area, too. Now, Asbury Park, I just got done with a live shot about 6.30 p.m. when it was coming in. Turn around and look, and I saw the first wave go over the boardwalk and then rush into the streets. We had to get everybody to go get their car and move it because they, was gonna get, they were going to get flooded out. By the time it had ended, we had uh, chest-high flood water surrounding our hotel. And it was were just, you ever afraid? At that, po at that point, I was a little nervous because then the lights go out, and uh, you know, you're not going to swim through that stuff at all. It was a little nerve-wracking for a couple hours there because we still had about an hour and a half before high tide before the water began to come down. But it was uh, chest high. We weren't getting out. So we picked a good hotel. We were safe, but, man, it got scary. Yeah, it did. You know, yeah. And for me, you know, we, as we continued on, about 11 o'clock at night, some of that waters had at least stopped. Right. And it, 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 right. It's up to my waist. Okay, we're good. Uh -huh. A little frightening, absolutely. Was there a, a people story, like a moment where you're like, Man, this is real and yeah. lives are ruined or it lost. Was. It was. Way. And I'll tell you, it wasn't at Asbury Park as much as it was at Hoboken. Because right. we went up to Hoboken after that, the day after the storm, and there was no power. And we're going up the parkway, and there's hardly any cars. And you're looking at the marinas on the way up, and you can see boats stacked up. And I, you know, I grew up there. Never seen anything like that before. We get to Hoboken that night. In comes the National Guard, and I was talking to people out there. They had no idea what time it was, Mike, because their cell phones had died. I mean, it, the power was run out. They didn't know what time it was. You're talking about uh, no analog watches up there. So we, we would allow people to charge up their cell phones on our sat truck, and uh, that's how we helped out people. It was crazy. Yeah, and truth be told, for us, I, I had no perspective. I mean, because I was in Atlantic City, and it continued as we went to Long Beach Island and different places. Right. There was no power. It wasn't like I went to the plush hotel and watched television exactly. and saw what you were doing. Yeah, exactly. I could hear what you were doing, yeah. but had no perspective of what's going on in New York, Hoboken. It was all about whether it was in Atlantic City, Long Beach Island. And, and uh, so just, you know, truth be told for everybody out there, I couldn't, I didn't know the pictures uh, of what you were know. going through We didn't know all. what was going through. The first time I saw it, I saw Seaside Heights underwater, the pier. I mean, I was just, that's where I grew up in my summers. I couldn't believe it. But then it morphed from that, it morphed to gas shortages and, and the power <laughs> still being out around New York. So that's what it was like for us. Yeah, you know, and back to the people. Mm -hmm. You know, we just have, it's one of those things where we're trying to get over the bridge onto Long Beach Island. Yeah, right. And then there was just this little community. It's called Beach Haven West, right, mm -hmm. right, right to the bay. It's like yeah, the near Barnegat a bay, bay there. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's where we stumbled onto the people that were going through this. And they were all standing there waiting. They pulled up into their cars. They're waiting to get into their community, to get into their house, to see what had gone on. And just the saddest stories. This little, this elderly woman, about 88 years old, she comes walking up to me. Right with her key out and she's blocks from her house and she's oh, like wow. I've got to get in my house I got to get some clothes another woman crying with her wet dog you know oh. it's like I got to get in my house and they had this rode desperation out the storm? they rode out the they storm were, no they had gone thankfully they gotten out of there because every one back. of those houses was five feet deep yeah. all everything they had ruined right. and then you know they're trying to be st strong and the tears <sighs> tears flow and I'll yeah, tell you this hard. I want to get your take on it. When, when we came back like, because I flew it back Friday night, went right. right to my son's high school football game. Right, it's like right. life is going to flip like this. <laughs> exactly. And I'm still sitting there, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm watching the game, and normally I'm as crazy as anybody about uh, football. Yeah. And I'm like, it just didn't matter as much. And mm -hmm. I wanted to say, hey, do you realize what's going on with people? Yeah. You know, you want to shake some folks who are yelling and screaming a little bit too much. You know, that perspective That's changed. exact same thing happened to me. You, you, you really are. You come back, and, and your life has changed because I'm thinking about my family still up there. And, and we're talking to this 10 days later, 10, 12 days later, still no power. 
So, I mean, it just brings it home. It's an area that you don't expect to see National Guard troops trying to help out. It, and when it's in your hometown, it's just, it, it's mind-boggling. So, I know exactly what you're talking uh, yeah, about. Yeah, different level. Different yeah. perspectives here, at, you know, Natasha, as, uh, yeah. as we've gone through this w with the people. And, and we just, you know, even through the election, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, mm -hmm. let's not forget. Sure, we were locked in on an election and, and our lives move on, right. uh, but let's not forget these folks who, whose lives, uh, we've had a loss of life, thankfully not as much uh, exactly. as it could have been, but uh, exactly. definitely lives ruined. And, uh, and then snow on top of that. Yeah, oh my gosh. It just doesn't stop. Yeah, they just one-two yeah. punch over mm -hmm. and over again. Okay.